Hello, my name is Melanie Leonard from the Law Office of Melanie C. Leonard, where we focus on residential real estate and help our clients close with confidence. I'm also a member of Main Street Organization of Realtors, Broker Lawyer Committee. One of the documents often overlooked at the time a contract is signed is the FHA or VA amendatory clause in real estate certification. This form is only required when the buyer is applying for an FHA or VA mortgage. And while the paperwork can often prove tedious, there are benefits to FHA and VA mortgages. The Federal Housing Administration, or FHA, was created in 1934 in response to the Great Depression. In an effort to stimulate the economy, FHA began insuring mortgages that buyers got from their bank. The Veterans Administration, or VA, does the same as a benefit to veterans. This insurance continues to make banks more likely to loan money since they are able to recover much of their money from FHA or the VA if the buyer stops paying their mortgage. The buyer receives the added benefits of a more detailed appraisal, a lower interest rate, and a mortgage with less money down. And sellers in the market receive the benefit of a larger buyer pool when FHA buyers are included. But the benefit specifically provided for in the amendatory clause is that the buyer does not have to move forward and close on the transaction if the house appraises for less than the contract price. Additionally, the buyer does not have to pay any penalty, including the loss of their earnest money, if the house appraises for less than the contract price. To protect this benefit for the buyer, FHA and the VA require that all purchase contracts be amended to include very specific language prescribed by FHA and the VA and found in the amendatory clause. In addition to providing this benefit, FHA and the VA want to ensure that the contract is true and accurate and that all of the agreements between the buyer and the seller are contained in the contract. Both the buyers, sellers, and each of their agents are required to certify this using specifically prescribed language found in the real estate certification. And while FHA and the VA prescribe the exact language required in both the amendatory clause and the real estate certification, they do not provide forms to use for this purpose. As a result, many organizations, including more, have created amendatory clause and real estate certification forms that contain the prescribed language and can be used to amend the contract. However, it is becoming more and more common for lenders to require that their specific amendatory clause and real estate certification forms be used. And upon receipt of these forms, you will see that the exact same language prescribed by FHA and the VA is used in the lender's form. But by requiring the use of their specific form, the lender is eliminating the need for their underwriters to read any alternate forms and determine if they have the same prescribed language as their own form. So the resulting best practice is to contact your buyer's lender prior to making an offer so that the appropriate amendatory clause and real estate certification form can be signed by the buyer and sent to the seller when making an offer. Also be sure to have your buyer initial paragraph 37 of the 6.1 contract when making that offer so that the seller is put on notice immediately that his or her cooperation with the addendum is required. Taking care of this on the appropriate amendatory clause and real estate certification form up front will reduce the risk that another form has to be recirculated for signature, possibly causing a delay of your closing. If you have any additional questions, please visit succeedwithmore.com. Thank you for your time.